Rock and roll. We got another uh, expert interrogation here with the one and only Carl Olson. Super excited to have him on today. How you doing, Carl? Hey, it's great to be here. I'm I'm a little bit tired, but <laughs> I've been up since 1.30 this morning, so I'm in <sighs> great form. Well, we appreciate you still coming on here today and, 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 and you know, giving your advice to, to everybody. So we truly appreciate that. So everybody um, who's in guest mode, we appreciate you being on. Uh, but we'd love for you to be able to interact in the chat or uh, to submit a question because the second half of this show, we actually take questions from you guys and we'll, uh, we'll ask Carl and uh, he'll answer. We'll do a little rapid fire. So when we keep this very business oriented. This is meant to help you guys on the business side of video production not so much the, uh, the tech, and um, we love it, uh, something new, I don't know why we haven't said it before, but really guys, we want to spread this to as many people as possible, so you just massive awesome favor, if you love this, you've loved what's been going on, and you've been doing this for the last few weeks, if you guys could, there's a little tweet at the top here next to live chat, there's a tweet and a share uh, button, please you know, tweet this if you're a Twitter person, or, or put, share it on Facebook, uh, so we can get more and more people on this every week, um, so we appreciate it. Thanks so much, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Chris. Chris? All right, so Carl, before we get started, why don't, why don't you give everybody a quick rundown on, on why you've been up since 1.30 in the morning? <laughs> well, my oldest son uh, and his wife, uh, they gave birth, well, his wife gave birth to a beautiful seven and a half pound baby girl about 7.30 this morning. So I uh, went into labor last night. So, uh, you know, we've got that glow. It's it's exciting, but we're tired now. <laughs> so we've already, we, Carl and I already established that if he starts to nod off, I'm just going to give him the old virtual slap in the face to kind of wake him up. So anyway, all right, guys. So just to get this going, Carl, if you would, just lay give us some groundwork on kind of how you got into the industry, just so that we understand a little bit more about your background. Well, uh, I started, I mean, most of my career, I've been a software developer, and uh, I, uh, but I've always had a creative side, and so in all my consulting work, I always, I was always looking for a way to express myself creatively. So, in the in the '90s, I did a lot of multimedia work. I I even did some video work back in the '90s, but boy, that was a challenge with uh, with the computers in the state that they were in at that time. But anyway, so I. Uh, I've done software development uh, for many years. In recent years, uh, one of the big challenges for developing websites is developing content. And I had a customer uh, one day uh, give me a bunch of video, and he asked me, can you do video? Uh, anytime someone asks me, can you do something, I usually say yes. Now, I don't, you know, I had a learning curve, <laughs> and I did that on my dime, but... Um, but I will say yes if I think it's something I can learn very quickly. And that's how I got into producing, uh, editing video, and then uh, producing video as part of our services with my IT company. And uh, so here I am today. It's I did a lot of client work over the last few years, but then a couple of years ago things started to change. I wanted to get away from client work, and, and so I'm, I'm doing uh, content production. So when somebody asks me what I do today, I have a hard time answering that question. I'll just say I'm a content producer. I'm a micro broad broadcaster. Um, sometimes I'll say I'm a podcaster. Of course, most people don't know what those things are, at least among family and friends. <laughs> so, <laughs> but content content production is what I, I try to stick with. I, th there was a pretentious period of time there when the Canon 5D Mark II came out, and I attached the label DP uh, to my name, which was very much undeserved. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I quickly learned that I was not a DP, but I do use the Canon 5D extensively to produce content. Okay, uh, we're getting some feedback, Carl, that, that you're a bit quiet. Is there any way, can you boost your uh, mic just yeah, a little bit no, there? How does that sound? Is that better? Uh, bring it down just a little. How about right there? Let's see, One, how's two, that three. sound, guys? Noah, how's that sound, level-wise? I... I, I don't want to sing, so one, two, three, test, <laughs> four, five, right. six. That's as high as I can count at this time. A little distorted. Maybe bring it down just a little bit more, and then I think we'll be. Okay. How about right there? All right. I think that's good one, for two. now. Um, All right. Okay. So walk us through, I mean, 
tell us sort of how you got into the, the podcast side of things. I mean, with what you're doing now with the Digital Convergence podcast. I mean, give us, give us sort of your, your journey, you know, getting into that, kind of how that's going and, and where that is now. Well, what I wanted to do um, when I got in, started doing video a lot, I knew I needed to learn a lot more than what I knew. And one of the best ways uh, to learn is to talk to people. And so I decided what I would do is I'd start a podcast. It was a relatively new, I, mean, I guess it's been out for a while, podcasting, but it was certainly something new to me. And I decided, well, why not? Why not give this a try? And it was unbelievable. From the first day that I started podcasting, it's amazing how accessible people were. And so I started interviewing people, and the primary purpose was so that I could learn something. If I, I felt like if I could talk to a lot of people who were a lot smarter than me, some of it might just rub off on me, plus I would have the opportunity to share it with others. So that's, that's why I started it. Yeah, We're up to, so, I think, 113 episodes. That's amazing. That's amazing. I know that you've gotten a, a a pretty substantial following as well. I mean, what, I mean, talk about a little bit, just sort of in, in you know listenership and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, we we are now in the tens of thousands. Which you know, when I first when I first started the podcast, my first episode, episode one, I had Planet Mitch of Planet Five D dot com on there. He was my first guest. And I had 273 downloads. So that was the beginning of my podcast. <laughs> and, uh, and now we're in the tens of thousands of downloads. So, uh, and, and I have to, you know, part of that is because over time as we get more subscribers, they go back and they download the archive. We, I get a lot of email where people say, hey, Carl, just found your podcast. And so I've downloaded and listened to all all of that. And, and and if you do, you know, that's well over 120, 130 hours of content that still has value to a lot of people. So we, I, I try to make that available. But the, the numbers have, have grown uh, as as uh, we've stuck with it. Well, I think I, I love listening. I, I haven't listened to as many episodes as I would like, but every time I just kind of dive in, the, the topics are interesting, you know, learning from different filmmakers, different parts of the you know production process, people that represent different areas is, is always pretty cool. Um, in, in your kind of experience in talking to filmmakers, not only on the podcast, but I know you you're pretty involved with like the what is it, the Atlanta Cutters group or you know the editing group. I mean, what are you well, seeing? I'm... Go ahead, go ahead. Oh well, I'm a I'm a raving fan. I'm not associated with the organization of Atlanta Cutters, but I do know the folks that the founders like Walter Piscardi, Chris Merkel, Dan Dobbs, um, TJ, uh, those guys do an excellent job. It's the second largest uh, user group, post-production user group in, in the United States. Wow. I mean, it is well attended. It is very well attended. Uh, and I think one of the things that's made them successful is they became multilingual, if you will. You know, before uh, here in Atlanta, there was a Final Cut Pro users group, but it didn't have a whole lot of support. And then uh, it was resurrected as a group um, that um, embraces all of the technologies. And I think that's what, just a footnote, I think that's something that we, in this business, we have to be really quick to change. We have to embrace change and, and learn uh, the various pieces and tools that are available to us. To me, it's just amazing what's what's out there. You know, that, that allows us to do what we do to produce content. So I know I'm in the category of people that are still, uh, you know, kind of pissed off on this whole Final Cut Pro change, you know, that happened. Get over it. However, I know, all over long. Over I mean, how do you, so I, I guess that's the quick answer, but I was just going to ask, I mean, what, what, you know, what's your advice for guys that, you know, have been doing it one way for so long and they're just trying to hang on as long as they can. And, and I mean, for me, I mean, a little bit is, I don't necessarily want it to start learning something new, but the other side of it is, you know, it, it just doesn't make sense right now because the technology still works. I mean, we're, our whole process is built around Final Cut Pro 7, and it just works. But what, in, from what you've seen with these guys and maybe in your own experience, either interviewing or in your own work, I mean, 
what do you have any suggestions on maybe what would be a good way to sort of make that transition without just kind of stopping the presses, um, you know, one day and then starting something new the next day? Well, Final Cut Pro 7 never stopped working. So, right. uh, you know, I still have projects that are in Final Cut Pro 7, and I still, I still cut in it. Uh, but take on other projects, smaller projects, in bite-sized chunks. What's that old cliche illustration, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Not that I've ever eaten an elephant, but it's <laughs> just, you, you know, that's what you got to, you know, you, you just have to take it in little, little steps and do it with an open mind. You know, some people try to use, uh, like if they go to Adobe Premiere, which is another fine product. If you go into Adobe Premiere, um, some say, well, use the Final Cut Pro 7 key mapping. And I say, no, don't do that. Just learn the Adobe Premiere default way of doing things. Just do it with an open mind. Just try little projects. Take it in, in uh, baby steps. Did anybody ever see that movie, uh, what, what, what About Bob? Yeah. You know, as a therapist, <laughs> take baby, baby steps. <laughs> I don't suggest death therapy, but I do suggest, uh, you know, taking baby steps. Just to so, have an open mind about it. So in your, in your, I mean, I know that's one thing that a lot of people are, are trying to figure out, but, but maybe even more so than that, um, what are you seeing as kind of the main problem or the main issue that, that filmmakers and video professionals kind of, you know, nationally or worldwide are, are facing? I mean, I mean, what's the biggest issues that people are having? Uh, it that well, we talked about this a little bit on our show yesterday on on the digital convergence. Uh, I think change. I think people are very reticent to change, and it's understandable. It's not, you know, we 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 have comfort. There's comfort in things that are the same. Like I get upset if there's a restaurant that I go to in my hometown of Douglasville, Georgia, and it's been there for 25 years and then it disappears. It's upsetting because it was something familiar, and it gave me comfort to see that. So that's human nature, but I think that is the biggest thing that we face, is, you know, we, we are not very adaptable <laughs> as humans. It's just our human nature. So change, I think, is the biggest thing. And that's what you're seeing in the industry. You know, people complain about how things are priced. Yesterday we were talking about the green avatars, the, you know, non-composited uh, green screen background. You know, people are all upset about that. You know, they want to form unions and they want to do all. You know, I'm not. I don't want to get political, but but the only thing you can really change is yourself and your attitude. And I think it's an opportunity to be creative. But you just have to look at. Uh, you know, how does the industry change? How how is uh, customers changing? What are they wanting to do? You, you've got to go along with the ride. Otherwise, if you insist that things stay the, stay the same in, in your video biz, oh, you're going to be left behind. So I, I know. That's what you were looking for. No, no, no. I mean, that's, that's, I think, I mean, I face that even myself. I mean, it's funny. As soon as you were talking about the restaurant, the thing that, that I thought of is, you know, every time I fall in love with a TV show, it gets canceled. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I, I'm reluctant to eat. Yeah, I, I know. I'm reluctant to even, you know, get excited about TV shows anymore because as soon as I just, you know, get ready to dive in, it's like, oh, this is going to be the last episode. But, um, you know, it, I think, so you, and you, you and I have Alcatraz then, huh? <laughs> no, no. My favorite TV show ever was The Unit, right? Because I just, I grew up a military brat. I mean, I love special forces type stuff. I mean, literally there used to be uh, Navy SEALs that would have like Sunday dinner in my house because my dad used to be on the amphibious war staff um, in Okinawa, and so it was just it was it was just cool to like be around those guys, um, and they're just they are some rough dudes, you know, but but they're but they're awesome, and so anything related to that I love. And when that TV show, I mean, I watched every second of those TV shows, and then boom, it was just gone. And anyway, so that's that's a sidebar. But um, I know that you and I have talked a lot in the past about just the whole idea. I mean, obviously, what we do at Create is try to teach people in the, the film and video industry, you know, the, the business side of what we do. I mean, there's so much talk about creative and technical and all of these things, and then change happens, and, you know, a, a new camera gets released, and then people, you know, flood to, to buy those cameras, and then they end up, you know, having money issues. I mean, what, you know, let, let's talk just for a few minutes about just the, the, the business side of video production. I mean, what are... 
in your opinion, um, what are just kind of your, your initial um, ideas or strategies or just initial advice on, you know, what, how people need to look at the idea of, you know, running a successful business as opposed to just buying gear, buying software, doing all that kind of stuff? I think that's, this is one of those areas where um, a few months ago at Atlanta Cutters, they had a session on this, this very topic as it related to post-production people. And a lot of the advice that was given was, you know, go learn more about your tools, and, uh, which, is, which is fine. You do want to learn about your tools. The craft is certainly the important thing, you know, important because if you don't know how to do the job that you, you're selling, you, you, you don't have anything to sell, that you don't have any value. But one of the comments that was made in that session that really struck me as odd was, you know, they introduced it and said, well, nobody likes to talk about business. It's not fun. It's boring. And I thought that was odd because to me, the business side of things is just as creative. The marketing side of things is just as creative. It's a holistic whole of your business. You know, I like to meet with people. That's part of marketing. You know, when I meet with a customer, it doesn't feel like a sales job, but it is sell selling, and it's fun. I enjoy talking to people, enjoy meeting with clients and finding out what their pain points and things like that. I enjoy learning about how to uh, grow my business and market my business and try different business models uh, to make it effective. And I think as creatives, it may seem like accounting and marketing and sales and all that is – is boring stuff, but it doesn't have to be. It can be a, a, a fun part of what you do. That's great. So I know that um, what I would love for you to do now, and then, and then I'm sure there'll be some questions that start flooding in based on, on what you're going to tell us, but kind of walk us through just what you're doing with REACH TV. I mean, talk about kind of your, your, the aha moment that sort of got you, you know, got the ball rolling, how it's gone, you know, I mean, any, any of, anything that you want to share with us, take some time as, as long as it takes to kind of lay that model out because I know there's a lot of us that are going to be very interested. Like there's a question already queued up, a guy's asking, you know, can't wait to hear more about mailbox money, you know. I mean, so just kind of yeah. give us, give us the, the REITS TV story. Well, you know, I've, I've, I've sat here uh, pompously talking about embracing change, and I have to admit that's been one of the hardest things for me to do. <laughs> Uh, and when I started, you know, because I was a freelancer, I mean, really, uh, honest to goodness, that's really what I was. I was, you know, I, I said I was in business for myself, but really, you know, I'm, I'm, I was making money based on the hours that I work. My skill, my time was tied to, to my business. So if I didn't work, I didn't make money, right? And I think that's the way most freelancers are. You know, you don't work, you don't make money. It's all tied to you as an individual. And a few years ago, I started getting really tired of this because I've been doing it for a long time. I just thought, wouldn't it be cool if I could get that mailbox money? <laughs> but I didn't quite know how to go about it. Uh, but this is where the value of doing the podcast came. See, remember I said I wanted to do the podcast because I wanted to learn from people who were smarter than me. And one of the people that I talked to was uh, Rodney Charters, who was the DP for the show 24. Four. And I currently. Yeah, and he is currently the DP, or was, up in, I think he still is, for the reboot of Dallas. Well, he, he was, I, I was just mesmerized when I was listening to him because he said um, he had just gotten laid off from the show 24, and he said that 250 people lost their jobs. And I'd ask him, well, you know, do you get a residual for that? And he said, no, the cunning souls at the studio level decided that DP should be below the line below the, the, the SAG line. So in other words, they get no residuals for their work. And so, uh, and that's, he said that was a craft. A DP should be a person who gets residuals from uh, shows being uh, syndicated and shown around the world, but they don't get a dime. They don't get a dime for their work. And uh, I thought, hmm, that's interesting. And he, he also made the comment, you need to own the content. That's a good phrase to remember, own the content. And so um, I was doing client work with uh, a water damage restoration company, and I had done I had shot several videos just like many of you do. You know, you 
they want you to come in, document the class, do some talking heads, interviews, customer testimonials, and you know, I'd I, and I'd do that, and I'd get my money for it, and then I'd get no more money. It was it, you know. If you, <laughs> you know, you did a a five thousand dollar job, you were done. That was it. Nothing else was going to come in from all that work that you did. And I thought, well, that's kind of like Rodney Charter's situation. Well, I interviewed this other guy by the name of Israel Hyman, Izzy, IzzyVideo.com. Some of you might know IzzyVideo.com. You may have used that as a tool to help you learn your craft of shooting video. Well, during the interview, he kind of turned the interview around, and he started asking me questions. He says, well, Carl, what are you doing with, uh, uh, with that water dam? You know, what are you doing uh, right now? And I said, well, I was shooting video for a water damage restoration company. And he just stopped me, and he says, man, here's what I would do. You know, I would go and tell them, I'll shoot the video for free and sell it as a course and share the revenue. Of course, when he got to the part about shooting video for free, I was aghast. I, I've never done anything for free. You know, I felt like my time was worth a lot of money, and, and I should get paid for it. So it took me a while to let that sink in a little bit. But finally, I decided, well, you know what? It's not a bad idea. I'll, I'll connect with a domain expert, uh, which in this case was my, biz, not my now business partner, Jeremy Reitz, who was running this uh, water damage restoration training facility. And, uh, and and get with him. So I suggested to him, after taking Izzy's advice and kind of thinking it through, I, I made the same proposal. Now, here's a guy, by the way, he's been spending thousands of dollars on me doing client work, shooting video. And now I come to him and ask him, hey, I'm going to shoot your video for free. Why didn't you do that before? <laughs> you know? But anyway, so I shot the video. You know, we, we talked about it. It took a couple of months for it to sink in. And finally, he came back to me and said, you know what, let's do this. We can do this. And so that was the genesis of, of our product called REITs.TV. I've been talking a lot. Um, that, that's that's perfect, that. man. Well, you were talking yeah. about the genesis of REITs TV, kind of how you got into it. And I think that that's, that was this awesome. Is what happened. <laughs> that's what happens so, when you've been up since 1.30. You forget where you go. <laughs> So, okay, so, it, I mean, obviously, we all have clients for the most part, you know, whether you're shooting seminars or promotional videos. I mean, I mean, we have guys that want to do safety courses. We have guys that, you know, you know, we, we shot a financial seminar last week for a, a company. And, you know, it could clearly be an opportunity. You know, they hold the seminar and um, they invite, you know, all of their clients and whoever else in the community. And they basically you know, teach investing principles for an hour or two hours, and then they do a nice reception and all of these things. And the whole idea, of course, is to, is to help keep the clients they already have by proving how knowledgeable they are, but then also to hopefully recruit some other clients, you know, for the same purpose. You know, hey, this is how smart we are. This is why you need to put your money with us, that kind of thing. So a few years ago, I convinced them, hey, you know, don't just invite your clients, invite the prospects. And then beyond that, we're going to shoot this video and get it on your website and you send it to people. So kind of the, the next tier to that would be, hey, let's package something that you can sell. But my point being is obviously it's more than just agreeing to produce the video for free. It's that whole, that whole middle selling part, that marketing and selling part that's kind of the, the black hole of, of any business, but definitely this business. I mean, can you talk a little bit about, you know, either – so just how did you overcome the challenge of, yeah, I'm producing this content now, but now I have to go and actually put it into a machine that will kick out sales. I mean, talk about how that, how that took place. Right. So, yeah, you want a cash, cash machine that uh, sends you the mailbox money, right? So what we did, <laughs> <laughs> what we did, I mean, you, you got to be sensible about this because not everything that you're going to do, not every topic is something that people want to pay money for. It's, um, you know, you still got to have a, 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 a minimum viable product, something that people will find value and that will sell. And sometimes the only way you can find that out is to test it. And so Jeremy and I talked about this and what we, well, I guess I should back up. When I, when I say shoot video for free, what we're, we're going to do is, shoot training material, a course, okay, and then we would offer that in a membership site. So our customers would 
would pay us X number of dollars to be a part of this this product, and it would be an annual product, and and they would renew annually. See, that's the other thing, though, as, as you get your cust more customers you want, uh, you, you have that retention. I mean, we have a 95% retention rate right now on our product, so every year we're going in our, into our third year now, well, second, little, yeah, yeah, early third year. It'll be third year in April. That, that's I'm trying to do the math in my head. Um, and so, so far, just about everyone has renewed. And we're coming up on a great big renewal cycle because we had a lot of people join at the beginning. So uh, that's that's good. So that means more revenue. So more customers, and then if they renew, you have more revenue, and you've already done the work on that. So uh, that's that was the whole idea is to have a membership site where we would have continuity in income. So um, I forgot your question now. No, that, that's, that's what that I was talking about. Well, like, more yeah. of it was kind of like, it, oh, yeah, we, yeah. I mean, how, how did you, because that's the thing, we, Michael and I, we decided, hey, let's do this. And then we thought, holy crap, how are we going to do this? You know, how, how do you put those, pe those building blocks together to get your product to the right people in a way that they purchase it and, and all of that stuff? Right. Yeah, so, so what we did, the first thing, there was a couple of criteria for me to choose a business partner that I could create a product. And, and so in Jeremy's case, he had a customer list. He already had an email list that had almost 5,000 customers on it. He had, a, he had a raving fan base because people loved his instructional style. So these people, were they would spend thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400 to to attend a class at his facility in the south part of Atlanta, which meant they would also spend a considerable amount of money in airfare and hotel and food and, and transportation to attend these classes. These people were, they were raving fans of Jeremy. So that told me that there was a market. No one else was really doing anything uh, with, with this market in video, online video. So uh, there was a lot. There was some criteria there that I felt made this a very compelling product. So what we did is, I suggested to Jeremy. I said, "Let's do a let's do a webinar. Let's just do a webinar. Send it out to your email list and and see how many people will just attend the webinar. And let's just pre-announce what we're doing." And that's what he did. He went out. He created this uh, uh, keynote presentation. Uh, did a forty-five minute. I don't even I don't even know if it was 45 minutes. Was, yeah, probably about a 45 minute webinar. 200 people responded. They signed up for the webinar, attended the webinar, and out of that 200 people, we had 20 hand us their credit card for $1,995 each. 20 people. So we had $40,000 in sales before we had shot the first frame of footage. That was a test. It said, you know what? People want this product. Now we can go do it. See, it mitigated our risk because we now knew that, you know, people wanted this, this product. Of course, it also meant now that we took everyone's money, we had, we had to deliver so that we wouldn't end up in jail. So, <laughs> so we went and shot uh, our first set of episodes, and we told everybody, I, I was just kidding about the jail part. We told everybody up front what we were doing. So this was February 1st. We were going to go live April 1st. And so uh, 20 people said, hey, we, we believe you. We trust you. Here we go. You know, we'll give you our money. And so we shot several episodes, and we went live April 1st of 2011, I believe it was. Yeah, 2011, we went live April 1st. Uh, with that, so but anyway, that that's how we tested the market. Uh, but you know, the email list is king. You got to have that. And I would suggest anybody that wants to do this type of thing start building your email list right now. So, so would it be fair to say then, if you were, if we were going to try to to reconstruct the model, that find somebody who's an expert in a particular field, but but. Really, if you want to do it right, it's not enough to just be an expert in that field. If they also are mm -hmm. teaching their expertise at some level and already have a following, because it, like you were saying, I mean, it, it'd be one thing to have, you know, like I've got an example of a guy who's 
does really well with an optometrist clinic in a, in a medium-sized market. And I think, man, he might be a great partner for this kind of thing. We could teach people all over the country with the online part of it. But now that I'm hearing you saying that, I'm thinking, well, he's, he, he hasn't taught anybody up to this point. So, I mean, we literally would be starting from the ground floor on trying to build an audience as opposed to if I could find someone else who has already, you know, like some of my manufacturing clients actually do, you know, one client, uh, they make commercial size heat and air units for like massive buildings and they actually have training where people that they sell the machinery to will fly here to Chattanooga and pay, you know, a couple thousand bucks or whatever to spend a few days with them just to learn how to use the equipment. So that would probably be a better um, option to start with because they already have a following of people who are willing to pay for that info as opposed to just picking an expert that doesn't have that sort of ready-made audience. Yeah, I think that would be a lot easier. I mean, that's what I wanted you know, when I started this is I wanted to make sure that I'd be able to sell to someone right out of the gate. I mean, you can do it without having that following, but you're going to have to build it up, and you have to be realistic. It takes time. It takes time yeah. to build up your customer, your, your email list, and that sort of thing. Uh, it just takes time to do that. But, you know, I, I wouldn't say don't do it because of that, but if you really want to jumpstart it, yeah, find somebody that has that presents well, that has a raving fan base, and uh, that will give you a big head start on doing this type of business. And I'm sure it helped, too, to know – that these people were paying, you know, a thousand or more dollars to, to physically be in the same room, you know, one time for a couple days with your partner as a, you know, because that right there tells you, hey, they're willing to pay that kind of cash for this sort of training. Exactly. And, uh, you know, if they're willing to pay that kind of money for a class, they're, they would probably spend that money on online training, too. And, yeah, and and indeed that's 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 been the case. People are spending money on the online class now. One of the early worries that my partner had was, would this cannibalize his live class sales? Well, no, it hasn't. Not at all. If anything, it's actually enhanced his sales. And each time he has a live class, you know, you'll have that class, but there'll be others in that class who will join. Like just like this week, we've had several people buy the product that was attending the class here in the, in the metro Atlanta area. So, wow. you know, no cannibalization happening. So, so you've got the right partner, the right market, meaning you know that they can pay. Now, talk us through a little bit about the actual technology behind how you're delivering the content. I mean, in terms of, you know, talk about the website stuff, the e-commerce a little bit, and we'll kind of go from there. Okay. Uh, I did a, a lot of research on this, and I have to admit that uh, I probably made, not probably, I did, I made some mistakes along the way, or I didn't understand things, or sometimes I would freeze up with analysis paralysis, like, you're, well, should I spend $300 on this product or $200 on that product? Will it give me X, Y, Z? Will it give me this capability? And you'll drive yourself nuts doing that. So finally we just said, you know, forget it. I'm going to go with this, 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 and this. It's all going to be off-the-shelf components, and I'm going to build it. And it won't be pretty. It won't be pretty. And it wasn't. My first iteration of Reach TV was horribly ugly. It just, it really was ugly. But it worked. So what, what did I use? The technology, the platform is uh, WordPress. Uh, that's basically the, the, the lingua franca of, uh, of, of, of content management systems. I, that's what I would use, just WordPress, because there's, there's really nothing else out there that's like it uh, if you want to use off-the-shelf parts. I use uh, a membership management software that's called Digital Access Pass. That's the piece that allows people to order the product. It handles the, the pass through to a gateway to do um, credit card processing. We use authorized.net is our is our uh, credit card processing uh, system, and the nice thing about uh, Digital Access Pass is it 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 is able to use the API with Authorized.net and talk to each other. So once a payment is successfully completed, 
then it will create the membership account, automatically send out emails uh, to the to the new user with their login information, their welcome, and, and, and all that good stuff. So Digital Access Pass is a membership software that I use for that, that site. There are other products that have come out since then that are better, uh, but that one, it does the job. So that's what we use for video. Now here's, this is where you're going to spend some money is how do you host your videos and how do you make sure that your users have a good experience on a mobile device, on a PC, or on a slow internet connection? How do you do that uh, without having to go through the trouble of hand coding some some uh, JavaScript and PHP and all that stuff to detect uh, bandwidth uh, speeds and things like that. Well, we went with a content delivery network called Bits on the Run. At the time, it was about the only thing that was available that was affordable that would handle. It has this piece called uh, Adaptive Bit Rate. So it's able to sit there and detect, is this on a mobile device? Oh, good. So I'm going to use HTML5 on, on an iPhone 5. Is this um, a desktop? Okay, if they have Flash installed, I'm going to use the Flash player. And if so, I'm going to use a higher resolution video. It does all of that automatically. All I have to do is upload one video, just like you would to YouTube, and it automatically creates all the codecs that are necessary, all the files that are necessary for the different um, uh, network speeds and, and resolutions for whatever platform it's displayed on. So having that was was a blessing. The other thing is you don't want in this in our particular case we we did not want people to download or easily download the video, and so uh, Bits on the Run provides a feature which masks the URL and it uses um, a streaming video streaming. So there's really not an easy way for people to steal or download the video. So that's one reason we, we chose that. Of course, if people are stealing your video, that's a good problem to have, but that's a whole different topic. So, so what else? It, I, I guess that's, a, that's, the, that's the core pieces right there. Well, and, and one thing I was going to add to that is I know even, even Michael and I, you know, we've completely busted our tails with the help of Spin and, and our assistant Keith in sort of figuring out all these different technologies. And I think I sent you a link the other day. You know, services like ClickBank now are kind of making all of that stuff under one roof. Like you just pay $47 a month and all the crap that we've just pulled our hair out, you know, trying to figure out of the last couple of years is like just ready-made. So guys don't feel like that you have to take the time to learn how all this other stuff, non-video stuff works because there's tools that are being really coming out on a regular basis now that are that are removing that guesswork. And so, you know, definitely don't let that be a, you know, an obstacle to doing that. That's a very good point. Uh, the ClickBank has a great platform. Now they take a, a percentage of your, of your, um, of each cells, oh, it's like we lose them or something like that. I forget what the exact percentage is, but they do take a percentage of that. That's okay. I mean, think about this. Do you want to sit there and fiddly with all the, you know, applying updates to DAP, uh, managing your credit card gateway, uh, your video content, you know, all of that stuff? It takes care of. It might be worth it to you to take that, have them take, uh, you know, follow the the Apple model where it's you know, they take a cut to make it accessible. Uh, the other thing, uh, there's a new uh, platform out there called Udemy. So I know I know one of our listeners on the Digital Convergence podcast, he created a iPhone video course. By the way, that's something that ought to scare all of vid the videographers because people are now teaching companies how to use iPhones to do what we normally get paid for. Uh, but that's a different topic. Just wrong. Too. Wrong. He is anyway. he is rocking it, man. He is making money off of this course through Udemy and AppSumo, which is a yeah, some AppSumo. of you may have heard of AppSumo. I'm friends with Yeah, them. they they are doing a promotion on this. Oh my gosh, that's huge. AppSumo will drive a ton of traffic for him. Oh yeah, well, he's, he's killing it. iPhone I videography. Think, you know, and, it, and it's funny because I think that that. And, and this wasn't really the direction that I was necessarily going to take the conversation today, but I think that exact comment is the reason why we all have to come up with some kind of content that we can own and sell to niche markets because 
it's like as as people get more knowledgeable about how to use their iPhones and market with YouTube and all of these things, the the overall demand for what we do will get smaller. Now I think there's still going to always be a demand for higher level production, but we're going to all be competing for a for a smaller pie. And so if we can use our but but see that so then I think there might be a shift where you know, if people are creating these membership-based sites and they're creating all their content with their iPhones and crappy lighting and that kind of thing, we'll have a huge advantage because our content and our, the quality of our content will have a higher perceived value. So anyway, that's another topic, but I just think that's an interesting, I think if, if, because we're in this production industry right now doing what we do, we have to start looking at ways to build assets that we can build residual income off of so if the market does start to slowly decline, you know, in terms of video production as we know it, we're going to be okay. We're going to be ready for that. And that doesn't mean, guys, that this industry is going anywhere. It's not. It's just going to look different. You know, we're going to have to find different ways to compete. Um, so I think really, let's just, let's go to the questions. We've got like eight questions, you know, and we want to want to make sure we get through everything and, and not hold you any longer than we need to, because we know you desperately need some uh, shut eye. So we're going to, we're going to throw it. Michael, is there anything you want to say before we, we start going to the questions? No, man, that was great. I just want to uh, do a, a, a quick check for everybody. Anybody in guest mode, if you want to ask uh, Carl any questions, we're taking those for the last 20, 25 minutes here. And uh, so you do that. If you, if you try to do it, it's right below me on the submitted question or uh, you try to chat, you're going to need to log in via Facebook or uh, Twitter or you can do it via Spreecast, so be sure to do that. Again, if you guys are enjoying this, we're wanting to reach as many people as possible, so we'd love if you'd share it via Twitter or Facebook. You can do that right above the, the call here. Um, that's about it, so I'm going to get it uh, rocking and rolling here. So let's see. Well, let's here. do I'm going to put, I'm going to do one more thing, guys. This, this, you know, these expert interrogations are brought to you by our, you know, our site, Create Insights, and uh, we do, Michael and I do a, um, an insider coaching program that basically helps people with the business side of video production. So you can go to the link there, createinsights.com slash coaching, check it all out, sign up for a free trial. You can definitely test drive everything, no credit card. We're not going to ask you to pay or, or give us your credit card and then charge you if you decide not to do it. None of that going on there. Um, so definitely just go check that out and, and see if that's something that you think could help your business. I know there's many people on the chat right now that, uh, that are members of the program, so maybe they can give you some feedback if, if you have any questions in the chat. But uh, other than that, man, let's go to the questions. Michael, you want to load them up? Yep. All right. Aaron Thomas, one of our insiders right there. All right. Aaron's saying, thanks for joining us, Carl. I'm digging the Gainfully Unemployed podcast. Have you or will you be creating an info product showing producers how to make reoccurring revenue from video? Yes, definitely. I am working on that right now. I hope to have it ready by the end of, uh, well, by the 1st of uh, April. Great. Awesome. Right, perfect. Perfect. Look at that. Quick answer. Nice and simple. So Darren Fitzgerald says, can't wait to hear more about Mailbox Money. I think we, I think we, we rocked that out. Uh, pretty much, if I'm not mistaken. So, Daryl, if you have any more more uh, follow up to that, uh, rock it out with us. Let's see here, Mike Cornett, another insider. Thank you guys for being on the call today. We truly appreciate you so much. Um, Mike Cornett says, has there been bandwidth issue uh, challenges with your podcast? Do you use a paid service or free service? I think you actually. He told me to delete one of these questions, so I think that might have been another one you already uh, answered. Well, but. So, so he's asking about the podcast, and this I think this is a good question because. A lot of times you'll see people say, well, use Amazon S3. And Amazon S3 is good for a lot of things, but you can rapidly ramp up uh, cost if you have a big spike in downloads. So like for my podcast, I don't really – um, Amazon S3 would literally cost me hundreds of dollars each month. I use a service called Libsyn. So I pay a flat rate of 20 bucks a month to uh, host um, each of my podcasts. for us, Carl? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's called um, libsend.com. Got it. Jeff, Jeff put it in there, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I, I'm not a good multitasker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but Libsend is a great service. Many, many, probably most of the of the popular podcasts that you listen to is actually hosted on Libsend. You pay a fixed fee each month. You get an X number of of uh, uh, 
X amount of storage, and uh, but there's no bandwidth charges. So if you have tens of thousands of downloads, you're not going to get hit with that. Whereas on Amazon S3, you would. So I would I would suggest Libsyn for podcasting. That's a great great point. Awesome. All right, Jeff Long, we truly appreciate you being on, man. Thank you so much. Um, Jeff says, as a creative person who combines video and business ideas. How do you determine which projects to take on? I have more business ideas of utilizing video than I know what to do with. Love that question. Oh, that is a that is an amazing problem to have. I admit, I have this problem too. <laughs> Focus is not my talent. Uh, I'm a guy. I'm a uh, multi. I'm a complex guy. I'm interested in many things, but I do have to rein it in sometimes. I so what I do is is I look for opportunities where I think I can have a good payoff, where I can get along with a person that I'm going to partner with. You know, that's very important to me. And, and I look at how committed is the other person going to be because I'm putting skin in the game. So if it's somebody that uh, is not going to do a whole lot, and I have talked to a lot of people. A lot of people have come up to me and said, hey, Carl, I got this idea. Let's work together. And, and um, you know, I'll investigate it, but... It's, you know, sometimes they're not, they're, they want you to do all the work, and I'm not really into that. I, I want to spread the wealth, as it were. So you just have to look for, is it somebody you can work for, uh, work with, I should say? Is it, a, is it a really, truly minimum viable product? Is there a demand for it? Uh, so you want to make, you got to use, use a good business sense just to make sure that it's that's something that, you know, people are going to buy. Uh, I'm going to put a great line in here from a, uh of mine who has an awesome thing called uh, B school. Oh, let's see if it'll go in the chat. It might be too long. Um, too long. I'm going to read it to you guys then real quickly. And we're going to take the next question. She's, this, is, this is right on the line with that. It says, I needed that period of my life where I juggled a lot of things at once. It was my personal truth and choice. But there also came a point, as I shared, where I realized that if I really wanted to make a major dent in the universe through my business, I needed to focus and devote the majority of my time and energy in one core area. So guys, it's, it's, it's really important if you want to have a massive impact to, to, to find that thing that's really going to help you reach your goals and all those other little shiny objects and all those other crazy things, put them to the side and go after that one thing that you can own. So rock and roll. Next question. I'll Mike try Cornette. to do that. I, I'll, try to I'll do start that. tomorrow. <laughs> uh, Mike says again, what are the percentages for selling the videos? If you're shooting the video for free, do you receive a higher percentage like 60-40? Uh, well, I'm not going to go into the specifics for, for, for various reasons, but yeah, you want, you want to have high percentages, uh, but you, you got to understand, you know, different types of products. Um, how to, how to say this? There's, you, you've got to allow for the overhead you got to allow for money to be reinvested into the product, okay? And so it's almost like it's a 30-30-30 split in reality because you want 30 to go back into business and you want 30 to go to your partner and 30 to yourself when all is said and done. I think that's, that's, the, that's a reasonable rate because you want to reinvest into the business because you're going to have to hire people. Uh, we've just hired three. We have three salespeople. Uh, which is a whole other topic in itself, but we found that traditional sales and marketing methods are, are very effective. And if you have one person that you're paying, uh, let me just use an example. I'm not going to use a real number, but let's say I, I hire a salesperson that, that with a base salary of $40,000. If that person generates me $250,000 in sales for that year, uh, is that person worth it? Yeah, you better believe it. So uh, we're slowly uh, bringing on people as we need them to do that sort of thing. But I guess I'm digressing from the percentages. It it all depends on what you put into it and what the other person puts into it. Each each case is is different. I mean, it might be a 50-50, might, but I think 30-30-30 is, is one of the best ways to do it because you want to reinvest something back into your business. Well, and I, and I think, just if I can add to that, Carl, um, I think that... You know, Mike, really what you're looking at, too, is, is how much of, is what your partner bringing to the table? I mean, are they bringing a ready-made audience, a ready-made distribution platform? I mean, if they already have a thousand 
students who have bought from them before and they've got an email list of 5,000 people, then that person probably should deserve to be more of a, I'm not going to say 50-50, but more of an equal partner in terms of revenue share. Now, like Carl was saying, you still need to reinvest a percentage of what comes in into your marketing, into your you know, technology, into all the overhead stuff, you know, employees, assistants, that kind of thing. But now, if, if, like there's a guy here in town who's a uh, you know, residential home builder and he's been doing it his whole life and you know, his dad did it his whole life, so he knows residential building, but he doesn't have any audience at this point. So if I took him on as an expert, I know that all I'm getting from him is his expertise. He doesn't have an I mean, so I'm going to have to do everything else to, to build it and make it profitable. So to me, I mean, in terms of revenue share, that might look more like a 75-25. You know, I mean, in terms of the money that you take out of the business, just because you are going to be doing all of the groundwork, all of that. So, I mean, going back to kind of Carl's suggestions earlier, I think for the first project, I mean, find that partner that already has the following, that already has the list, that already has that stuff, so that, you, you know, that, because honestly, that's the hardest part. It really is. I mean, it's not hard to make the videos. It's not hard to get the technology going if you use some of the good resources we've talked about. The hardest part is finding customers who have proven that they'll pay money for whatever it is you're trying to produce. Amen. Amen. Jeff Long again, Jeff says, uh, when partnering with people or companies to create residual video train materials, how do you determine that it's a good fit for you? Do you have a checklist or system to narrow down those you want to work with? Well, I'm not that sophisticated, I, but I do think uh, one of the best ways to do this is just to get to know the person, and that takes time. You're not going to, you're not going to figure this out in one phone call or one meeting. Spend time working with it. The nice thing about Jeremy, he was already a customer of mine, so I knew how he worked. I had attended his classes, uh, documenting his classes. I saw how people interacted with him. I saw how he treated his customers. This guy is good with his customers, and people love him. And uh, in my own personal experience with him was he treated me very well. So I figured, well, uh, you know, that 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 goes a long ways. So you just have to spend time with a person to get to know. You, you, you can tell if you spend a little bit of time with them. But I don't have anything scientific or systemized for that now. Rock and roll. Um, let's see here. Jonathan Fritzler. Man, this guy's a rock star. I appreciate it, buddy. Uh, thanks for being on the call. Uh, what have you done to overcome convergence? I'm not sure what that means. Jonathan, if you have a follow-up to uh, make that question more clear uh, to, to Carl, please please follow it back up. I'm old, and, I, and I've been up since 1.30 a.m. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get your question answered, Jonathan. Just follow back up. I'm, gonna move yeah. on to the, uh, no, I'm sure it's a great question, though. I just got to figure it out. Yeah, so Jonathan, if you hear that, we'll, uh, we'll get it back to you. Let's see here. We've got Carl, my man, from Dan Rollins. There's Dan. Dan, Dan Bam. <laughs> Glad you're here. Uh, can you walk through the details of your setup to produce the content for the restoration site? Are you one-man show, DSLR shoot, simple lighting setup, interviews plus B-roll? Just curious how to keep something like that easily sustainable to maintain profitability. Is there a sample video this we is, can watch? Thanks. This is a very good point um, because... <laughs> I remember when Jeremy and I first sat down to talk about this, we we're both big fans of Alton Brown's uh, uh, Good Eats show. And so we said, oh, let's do it like Good Eats. The only problem is each episode of Good Eats cost $250,000 to produce 23 minutes of material. So there, there was no possible way uh, that we could do that. But what we did find is that uh, when we looked at what was being produced, uh, which wasn't very much. The quality was very, very poor. I'm not a I'm not a super duper talented uh, filmmaker. I'm I, but I can do competent work, and so I felt like that what I did or what I would do it would be a whole lot better than what anybody else out out there had. The other criteria is we needed to produce a lot of content very quickly, and so we learned the first time we shot it took us two days to shoot four episodes. And, and and the reason was is because we didn't know what we were doing. We'd never done this type of thing. Uh, 
you know, like writing a script, writing an outline, uh, what kind of equipment would be needed. Uh, I, I was overkill. I remember I was so exhausted that first. I took every piece of gear. I had Kessler crane jibs and sliders and tripods and cages and huge lighting equipment, backdrops and backgrounds and green screens. And now today I just pack my camera. I have a tripod. Uh, I use a uh, Sennheiser uh, G3 uh, wireless mic. And some, a lot of times it's just work lights or maybe a couple of soft boxes uh, that I take with me. And so I've really simplified it. And we, we don't even use uh, backdrops anymore. We use the flood house, which is a, a full-size house that's literally flooded and used in the live classes. So we actually have a set, if you will. It's just ready-made. And so we just shoot in there most of the episodes. So they're very simply shot. We do an outline. Don't really do a script per se, but we do have the talking points and the shot list. And we keep it very simple. Talking head at the beginning, talking head at the bit, at the end, some simple demos. And now we shoot between 8 and 12 episodes in one day. We do that once every two months. So I shoot one day. takes me two days of that to edit all those episodes together and have them ready to upload. So I basically put three days of work shooting and editing. Jeremy puts in about the same amount of time writing the script and then performing. So he, he puts in work on the front end. I'm kind of in the middle and in the back end. So not bad for what we make on, on uh, Reach TV. I hope. So it, it, you do have to simplify things. You've got to have a template for your editing so that everything just falls into place very, very quickly. Great advice, Carl. Great advice, buddy. Appreciate it. Just a couple more questions left. Um, we've got Jeff Lawn. How, how do you avoid spreading yourself too thin if you have multiple businesses that you partner with? I'm doing this with several people and don't want to get burned out. Ah, oh, I'm very selective. You know, and that's the beauty of mailbox money is you you don't feel compelled to have to take on every gig that comes your way. I say no quite a bit. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong or it's a bad thing to take on client work. It's just something that I've chosen, and I'm now in the situation where I don't have to do client work. About a year ago, year and a half ago, I made the conscious decision to say, I'm not taking on any more clients. Now, that's not to say I wouldn't do it. I mean, if Steven Spielberg said, hey, Carl, you're, you know, come to, <laughs> you know, if some great opportunity came along, I'd probably do it for the fun of it. But I say no a lot. But I have a couple, you know, I have a couple of businesses. My IT company runs itself. Um, so, you know, I have revenue that comes from that. And then revenue, especially from Reach TV, has been very good. So that, that helps me there and then from other sources. So. Uh, I, I'm just trying to be very, very selective. I don't, I don't take on everything. That's the beauty of having re, uh, uh, what I call leveraged income. Some people call it passive income, but uh, you, I don't think there's any such thing. I think what you have to do is you put a lot of work in on the front end, and then the item or product that you create, it keeps making money for you for the life of that product. And so that's, that goes back to what Rodney Charters was saying. You've got to own the content. So it keeps working for me. And I can be selective because I'm not so worried about getting the next gig. So Jeff, I'm gonna I'm gonna borrow I'm gonna borrow from our buddy Brett Colt. Uh, you know, one of the last things he said in our call the other day, I guess last week, was you know, it, it, he wished that he would have spent more time going deep in his business before he started going wide. So what I would suggest is, you know, if you've already got some things in motion, that's fine. But if you could pick you know, the one partner that you think has the best opportunity right now, let that be the partnership that you test and you make mistakes and you try some new things. You do because otherwise you're going to be making the mistakes times however many partnerships you have. And I think that can really kill your momentum and it can kill your uh, frustration. I mean, you can, it can make you frustrating, frustrated. I mean, we do that like, you know, I've got three companies and Michael's got several companies and it's like if, if we're trying to apply the same method to every company at the same time and then it ends up being the wrong method, well, we've wasted a ton of a ton of energy um, and in some cases money. So I think, I mean, Carl, what do you think about that? I mean, would you suggest maybe 
it, all of us really, not just Jeff, but saying, you know what, find the best opportunity you think that you can get and, and let that be your guinea pig and just try it, you know, make all your mistakes with the first one, perfect the model, and then replicate. I think that's a good, I think that's good advice. Uh, that's what I've done with Reach TV. I really have tried to focus in on that. I have talked to other people about developing other ideas. In fact, I am working on other products with other people right now, but uh, it's been a long, drawn-out process by design. I've chosen to do that because I did not want, I don't want to rush into something uh, that's going to take up more of my time. The whole point I'm, uh, of doing this is so I can have more time to do the things I want to do. <laughs> I mean, I like video, but I also like, I do a lot of volunteer work. I like to travel. I like to spend time with my family. I got a brand new grandbaby. I guarantee you I'm going to work hard to spoil that thing. Uh, you know, I want to do those things. and I want to have the flexibility to do that. And I hate the tyranny of the clock. So yeah, dive deep into an idea, develop it well before you go on to the next thing. Well, I'll add to that real quick, and we'll get on to these last couple questions. I love the fact that's actually a great quote that I haven't heard before, and I truly believe what you said, that there's there's no true passive income. It's, it's leveraged income. And the fact of that once you've worked really hard and it can continue to make money, like you can wake up and go, oh, wow, there's more money there, and you can't have that with client work like you're saying, but it is. It's like by having that kind of income that can come in while you are working on something else, that you're, it, that money's working for you, now you're able to do other things. You're able to say no to other things, and it gives you that opportunity to go on to other opportunities, but you've got to perfect one, and I think what the one quote that I read off earlier, the big point is that if you don't focus on one and, and perfect one, too many of us, we get about halfway there, and then we move on to another one, and that one's not really running yet, so it starts to kind of die early on before the, you know, and it's just this bad... Um, you know, cycle we get ourselves caught in, if that's um, if that makes sense to you. Yeah, yeah. I just realized I was just checking my email. Isn't that terrible? Isn't that, that's rude, isn't it? Check your email while you're on a live been, streetcast like this. We've been, we've been but, checking but it made, the whole time. <laughs> hey, I made, I made three hundred dollars. See, look at that. Nice. <laughs> Doing this, isn't that cool? See, so I can see, do fun things like this, and the money comes. On, in. I love you, it. You come on this show and you make money. That's how that's how it works. Is that what is that the soundbite we just got? That, that is that is the... it. That's it. Watch <laughs> watch expert interrogations and you too will make money. That's right. <laughs> that's a tweetable. Mailbox money. That's a tweetable. All right. Well, let's just take these last two and then uh, we'll rock it out. Uh, Jonathan, I think followed back up here the business side of technology and how you've adapted as well as the cost to do so. So maybe that's the convergence okay. question that he's kind of talking about. The convergence about. thing. The business side of technology and how you have adapted. Jonathan, you might be too sophisticated for us today, man. Man, he, see, that's the problem. He's smarter than I am. But, okay, <laughs> I'm going I'm, I'm to take a stab at this, all right? So I was a typical geek, okay? So when, when I was a freelancer, I never studied anything about business. See, see I'm, I'm a colossal hypocrite when I talk about this stuff because for years I didn't know how to do that. I didn't even know this world existed. You know, so, uh, you know, when I was a software developer, I read all the time. But you know what I read? How to code and, you know, C, C Sharp, uh, Visual Basic.net, you know, ASP.net, uh, Ruby on Rails, and all. You know, that's what I was reading. And I thought I was doing the right thing. Um, but then I, I had a business partner that started working with me back in the mid to early 2000s and uh, he was very business savvy and so he started you know I started listening to him and uh, I started reading more about marketing reading more about business uh, and things like that and that is I, I guess that was a transformation just reading self-educating myself you know I didn't go get an MBA I think that's crazy to spend a hundred thousand dollars on an MBA I think you should Take that, you know, take that hundred thousand dollars and invest it in your business. You know, uh, you know, a thousand dollars will buy you a ton of books, and and many of them very well written. Let's see, a good one is called the Personal MBA. Read that book, Personal MBA. That's a great book. It's an easy read, and uh, it'll really get you psyched up about the business side of things. I don't know if that answers this question, but 
I think reading and educating myself, going outside of what I was used to reading, helped me a lot. Rock and roll, and I think you put this in here. Uh, Dan the Man just says, is there a sample episode you can share? Is that on the reads.tv website? Yes, uh, there's a slider, which I, I intend to eliminate eventually because I've, I've grown tired of sliders. Um, <laughs> I, I think that's a bad – if you're going to create a new website, just don't do a – don't do sliders. Just focus in on your message, which is the video. But there is one of them has a sample video, and if you go and watch that, you'll see little clips of what we do. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, Carl. awesome, Carl, man. I love it, buddy. Carl and I, we mastermind all the time. In fact, he was just in town a couple of days ago, and, and we spent uh, way too long sitting on the hard chairs at, at Cracker Barrel. Uh, you know, as I said in the they chat earlier, I think, out, didn't yeah, I mean, I, I said, I think we came up with 12 ideas that we wanted to pursue, and then we kind of had to talk, to talk each other off the ledge and, uh, and just kind of get back to work with the, with the ones that we already have open. But, uh, but buddy, I love it, man. I love talking to you and, uh, go get some rest, man. We're going to, we're going to go ahead and log you off. And then we've got a few things we're going to say, you know, to the audience, but, uh, thanks buddy. Well, hey, it's been my pleasure to, uh, talk with everyone and, and just be inspired. You, you folks have the tools to do it. You're content producers from this day forward. Hey, and, and real quick, put in the chat, uh, and we'll put it up on there. Put the, uh, I know we've done the digital film TV, but do your uh, your new podcast so we can get that out there for everybody too. The Game okay, Committee Unemployed, do that. which is awesome. It's a, it's a cool show that Carl's doing now. There you go. You know, put that on the screen. Awesome. Boom. Boom. Awesome. All right, Carl. Take it easy, man. Get some rest. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so All much. All right. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. That was awesome, guys. Thank you all so much for being on here today. And I want to throw this out, Chris, just for the heck of it. I had a few people because I think this is a good platform to mention it, even though not everybody even knows what we have going on. I want to throw it out to some of you. I've mentioned a few in the chat. If any of you have audiences and you're followed in the video industry, um, something that you may consider that we're going to be rolling out here in the next coming months is actually a Create Partner Program. And um, I just put it out there publicly. Sometimes you got to ask for the things that you want. And if you guys are afraid of starting all this and everything, um, we could get into more details. You can email us at Info Great Insights. I won't say much about it, but you definitely could create uh, a residual income um, from that if you have an audience and help spread the word about Create and uh, building building the community that we have over there. So I won't say too much about that, but Chris, tell them a little bit more about Create, but that'll definitely uh, – send us an email if you guys would be, if that tickles your fancy. So, uh, Yeah, so createinsights.com uh, is basically a website where, uh, you know, Michael and I got together a year ago and we said, you know what, um, we know that a lot of people in the industry are struggling with making more money using their tools and their creative abilities, so we started uh, createinsights.com. And essentially, taking it a step further, we said, you know, we know that if you go to a conference for two or three days, you're incredibly inspired, and you leave with all these awesome ideas. And then as soon as life starts happening again, and you start getting back into the, the humdrum, doing your business, you know, paying bills, trying to edit, all this stuff, that sort of excitement, that inspiration kind of starts to wane. Well, what we've done with the Create Insider Coaching Program is we make sure that every week, Wednesdays at 2 o'clock, there's a two-hour live interactive Q&A coaching session where Michael and I basically take your questions and we help you, you know, with whatever the issues you're having right then, right that week, right then. You know, we're helping you uh, figure out how to write proposals for a meeting that you have the next day. We're talking about, you know, reducing overhead, how to work with freelancers, contractual type things, writing proposals. I mean, it's, it's all about the business, marketing, sales, cash flow experiences. I mean, Michael and I have a wealth of knowledge on, you know, taking your situation and say, well, here's what happened to us this one time, you know, and, and what we're finding as our community is growing is we're really, the, the bank of knowledge is just replicating out of control because there's so many people who are Create members now that are having, you know, just as much success as we are and they're sharing their stories and they're helping, you know, you guys connect. I mean, I know you know, Dan Rollins and, and a couple others. I mean, Dan is a is killing it up there in Minnesota. And, you know, I've hired him to do a couple jobs for me. So this and I think there's been some other connections 
where you know create members are hiring other create members. So it's so in a lot of cases, it's it could be a revenue source that you haven't necessarily um, considered, and and it's and it's you know worldwide. I mean, we have members from all over the place, and our mission basically is to just continue to grow this thing. I mean, we're kind of on this. You know, Michael and I are joking. We're on a on a journey to 1,000 members. I mean, we're just trying to say, you know, what would what would the industry be like if there were a thousand people, a thousand video professionals that understood how to run a profitable business, who understood how to market, who understood how to sell? I mean, think about all the corporations across the world that would have to start paying attention to what we're doing. You know, I mean, if right now they're listening to agencies. They're listening to the social media gurus. They're listening to all of the crap that's telling them what video should be. I mean, making corporate videos with an iPhone. I mean, give me a damn break. I mean, seriously, you know? So if there's a thousand of us out there that are just basically just, just killing it, crushing it, and demanding that attention, I mean, what could the industry be? I think in that case, the pie could be way bigger, and there'd be way more work for all of us to have. But I think that's the – that's. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm just going on a rant here, but I just think there's so much, you know, that's wrong. I think we just kind of sat in the background. We've let all this stuff just happen. You know, we let all these things happen. And instead of stepping in and saying, no, 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 that's not cool. We're not going to just let you take our industry and spit on it and kick it to the curb and say, oh, you don't need these, these high-level video professionals to represent your company. Um, I think it's time that we take it back. I mean, we really have to do that. We want to keep you motivated. I know I'm fired up. Michael, of course, is fired up about it, and uh, you know we'd love to to get you guys on board. I mean, if yeah, it is a membership program. It's twenty four dollars a month, guys, and I'm sure some of the members here in the chat can attest to. You're going to get. I mean, if you only get ten times your return on investment every month, then you don't need to be a member. I mean, I mean, we're helping people. You know, uh, Dan. You know, Dan Rollins just sent us a testimonial last night talking about that. You know, we've helped him have a 400% increase in sales from last year to this year. And he's been a member almost a year. And we obviously can't accept all that credit because he, Dan's doing it. I mean, he's the one out there doing it. But it's the fact that I think that we've been a position, in a position to teach when he needed to be taught, motivate when he needed to be motivated. And really, it's just it's like a daily checking in. I mean, he and I talk on the phone sometimes about certain things, catching up via email. And uh, I know I'm just I'm I'm just kind of going crazy right now. So go ahead and, and pick it up, Michael. But guys, I just we're so passionate about helping you be successful, and uh, and really would just do the free trial. Try it out for 30 days. If you love it, stay with us. If you don't, you know you don't ever have to come back again. But but definitely just go check it out. Well, and the final thing that I'll say, or I'll probably be a couple finals, but you know I've been on the horn today with people, and the big thing that's been uh, sticking out that people have had a pain with is that a lot of the places out there, they've, they're like, I'm not on forums anymore. I'm not on anything. You know, I'm not on any of this stuff because of all the negative that's been associated with that type of stuff with Facebook groups and, and forums. And the thing is, is they were saying how they, 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 one lady got called a name and the, and the forum administrator wouldn't even delete it. I said, we had somebody on a spree cast a few weeks ago that was acting like a jack and we freaking banned them <laughs> immediately. Like, we do not... Tolerate zero tolerance for BS. We're here to make sure that you guys are in a positive atmosphere. That uh, thanks, Brent, dude, you rock, man. Hopefully, we'll hook you up with that job here soon. Can't wait to connect. Um, but we want to make sure that you're in a positive atmosphere. That you guys can really, you know, reach your full potential. Um, so you know, we just truly appreciate. It. I'm so passionate about it, and uh, you know, thank you guys so so freaking much. And, um, you know, again, check out the sites, check out everything. If you have any questions, we're here to be here for you for the long haul. We're not going to fall off the map tomorrow. Um, and if you love this, please tweet it, please share it. We want to have the expert interrogations continue to grow and grow and grow, too. So you guys all have audiences, all have friends. Um, if you could, you know, tweet that or share it, we'd so appreciate it. And one final thing, if you're on here and you're not on the email list, we won't spam you. We won't send more than a few times a week to make sure you're notified about these calls. We also get the six-figure videographer ebook uh, that that Chris has put together. That's amazing. That really changed my life, and I went from forty thousand dollars to six figures the year that I connected with Chris a few years ago. So, rocking stuff, guys! Um, thank you so freaking much. Um, we'll have some more here um, next next week, and um, that's it. So, thank you so much. Rock and roll.
Ron Dawson. Ron Dawson's coming up on Tuesday, so you guys will definitely have to check him out. He's he's awesome. He is awesome. Rock and roll. All right. We'll see you guys later. Take care. Awesome Dawson. <laughs> awesome. See you guys. All right.